God bless you. God bless all you mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to start our service by giving glory to God this morning. So let's do it together. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God.
near you so you can pray for them by name later. What a beautiful day. God bless you all. The fellowship is sweet here at Northview, and we're so thankful for that. Again, once again, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers today. We just uh, are thankful for our own mothers and uh, for all of you that are mothers as well. All of you that are online, welcome, and uh, you can uh, say hello to everybody uh, uh, there online, make a comment. And uh, in your bulletins, you can get that out, take out the connection card, fill that out. And uh, if you're a guest here today, you can take out your cell phones and you can text the word hello to that cell phone number there. And it comes into the church and you'll automatically get a reply back and can have a, a conversation there to, to welcome you. We're, we're glad you're here today. If you... Uh, Picked up your communion today as you came in. That's great. Uh, for those of you that are at home, uh, prepare your communion. And uh, also, the back where you picked up your communion is a place where you can place your connection card when you leave the service today. And it's the place where you leave uh, your offering as well. And if you choose to uh, give your offering by donating uh, online, you can go to our website and go down to the bottom of the page and hit the Donate Here button. And... Um, I hope all of you uh, have your bold faith prayer guides. If you do not have your bold faith prayer guide, um, pick one up before you leave today. We are in a 36-day period that we're praying uh, for uh, our churches 
for our county, uh, for the nation, specifically uh, focused on the theme of bold faith. And uh, also we'll be handing out another handout uh, right before the message today. And um, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit better. I just want you to anticipate you're going to uh, receive that as well. And uh, at this time, we'll have a missions moment. All right, good morning. morning. I'm going to be talking about AIDS this morning. International Disaster Emergency Services. Uh, Mostly I'm going to talk about Ukraine, how they're helping Ukraine. They're still involved with looking for volunteers to help with rebuilding efforts in Kentucky, uh, where the tornado went through and tore up the homes. They're looking for volunteers to go down there and help rebuild homes again, yet. And uh, in, I, in Ukraine, uh, they have 15 partners, they're calling them, in 11 countries where they're trying to help the refugees of Ukraine. And they're also helping those in Ukraine. Uh, AIDS partners have been working tirelessly to establish, maintain, and supply refugee camps with places for Ukraine refugees to sleep for food and basic necessities. Uh, They have put together what they call gap meals. I haven't, I didn't see what what the gap meal consists of. But the first two containers with 5,100, 5,800, 518,400 cat meals are on their way to refugee camps run by AIDS partners. Another half million meals are being prepared for transit and will follow soon. Our partners have been housing, feeding, and providing basic necessities to refugees since the start of the war. These meals will be distributed among the refugees in their camp. They're also Well, the paper will come apart. Uh, planning to take meals into Ukraine to help the internal displaced still in the country. Uh, the 150,000 pounds of gap meals were packed by AIDS amazing volunteers from 20 different churches across eight different states. So uh, we could not re- provide relief work this large without the work of our volunteers. We thank each and every one of them for the time and effort they gave to pack these meals and pray for the lives that will be impacted. Another half million meals will be sent out after the current shipment. We are so pleased to be able to provide for the people of Ukraine in this way. If you would like to be a part of AIDS Ukraine relief efforts, Make a check out or put your money in one of the envelopes that's in the back of the pew. Mark it for IDES, and it will be sent for Ukraine. They promised that the money donated for this, 100% of it will go to Ukraine to help Ukraine. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> There's just so much information I could find on that that, you know, it just goes on and on. But they do so much good in my eyes that uh, I'm going to put a check in for this, and I hope some others will be able to do that too. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for your love. We thank you for the many volunteers that help to try to help the people of Ukraine. We pray, Lord, that what we can gather up will be some assistance to help in that relief effort. We just pray, Lord, somehow that you can uh, help relieve the many, many people that's suffering from this war over in Europe. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we'll have our uh, congregational reading, if you'll stand. I will give thanks to you, Lord, 
with all of my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the word in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the opposed, oppressed in the times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen. We're going to bless the Lord this morning. Sing in such a way that you will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day. song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like
day when heaven was filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and light shined among us glory
before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the tell you what, I lost my mom. I didn't, yeah, I lost my mom back in 2009, but I can tell you this, because of my mother's dedication to Jesus Christ and her teachings, I know for a fact that I'm going to see my mother one day in heaven. I'm so excited about that, and boy, let me tell you what, I'm going to ask her, see if she can cook her doggone, uh, yeah, <laughs> she makes some great cinnamon rolls, let me tell you. And another thing is, this uh, Mother's Day, I am so excited because my daughter Sam, go ahead and stand up, Sam. My daughter Sam is celebrating her first Mother's Day with child. Amen. Yeah, oh yeah, that makes number 19 or 20. I lost track a bit ago. But uh, 
God is good, and God has blessed me and our family, and I can believe with all my heart that he is going to bless you today, amen? amen. So, and, I, and, when, and then I think of the height of the cross. It extends to the throne of God. It doesn't matter how high heaven is. Through the cross, God draws all men to him. And you have to make a decision about Jesus Christ. Scientists are looking out into space further and further and further, but they can't get away from God. The subject of astronomy and the subject of space frontiers, very exciting to me. There, there are scientists there here tonight or, and today who know far more about the height of the universe than I could ever explain. But heaven is out there somewhere. We don't know exactly where to the height of heaven, and to the depths of hell. The cross extends to our hearts, if you let it. Think of the cross a moment, and think of his suffering for you and for me. It's said that Jesus endured five basic wounds, that medical science defines us. First, contusions when they beat him on the head, and tortured him and put a crown of thorns on him for you and for me. Lacerations. They bared his back and took a leather whip with steel pellets on the end and beat him until he was bleeding from the head and to the toes. That was the Roman way. They tortured prisoners before they took them to the cross. Then there was a penetration. They crushed that crown of thorns on his brow, and his head bled. There were perforations when they drove the nails through the hands and feet. There was incisions when they put the spear in his side. That suffering, those nails through his hands and feet, were driven by you, and by me and all the peoples of the world because we had a part in the death of Christ. Because of our sins, our sins put him on the cross and we participated. The breadth, the length, the height and to our hearts The cross of Christ. As ugly as his death was, as beautiful as he lives today, as beautiful he lives in us, the cross made us who we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. We're going to celebrate that today. I want you to take your Community cup. Now I left mine back over here. Back one here. Okay. We're going to celebrate the cross today. By celebrating Christ's death, you take the bread, which signifies his body that was broken for you. Take and eat. And do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. This represents the blood that was shed for you. That when those spear, that spear went aside. The crown of thorns was shoved in his head, and the nails was in his hands and feet. This blood was shed for you, and this blood was shed for me. Take in remembrance of Jesus taking the cross. Father, we thank you so much. As high, as wide, 
cross is. It reaches from heaven and it reaches down to the depths of hell and it reaches from the east and to the west. And it reaches in our heart. And so, God, we thank you so much that you had given up your son for a little bit for the love of us that you have, the love of us that Jesus had for us, dying on that cross, and we celebrate that every Sunday, and we also celebrate the resurrection of the tomb that he conquered death. Amen. As a part of our communion with the Lord, we also remember his body, the church. And so that's why we had you get uh, a name, the name of the people close to you, so that we can pray for one another by name. No one will leave today without you knowing. You have been prayed for, brought before the throne of grace by the fellowship of the church. And also think about those who can't be here today because either physically or spiritually or emotionally, uh, for some reason they're not able to be here. And uh, we need to uh, remember them, pray for them and for their encouragement. Amen? We don't cut out the legs from underneath the wounded. We build them up. And so that's the purpose of our prayer time together. So let's, let's pray for one another online. Pray for your neighbors as well. And uh, then I'll have a prayer. Lord Jesus, based on the power of your word, we come to you this morning. You spoke and this universe came into existence. You spoke and said we could pray, Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. May your kingdom come and and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. You spoke, Lord, and said we need to pray for one another. And so, Lord, we do that this morning because you know, Lord, what it is that we face this week. You know, Lord, the challenges that are coming our way. And, Lord, you know how deep the evil and how greatly the evil forces are trying to destroy your creation, to destroy your people, to discourage, to dishearten to do everything they can to hurt your people. We're so thankful, Lord, so thankful that you love the world, that you gave your only son, that all who would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, especially in those countries that are under severe Uh, Attack, whether it's a physical attack or a spiritual attack. There are those in persecution, and we pray for them. They are a part of the body of Christ. And we pray, Lord, that today as we open up your word, that uh, your word would pierce our hearts and our souls. Help us, Lord, to draw close to you. You will draw near to us. We thank you, Lord. We we bless you today for your love for us. And we especially, Lord, pray for our mothers, for our wives, for those, Lord, uh, whom you have designed to help bring life into this world. And we thank you, Lord, and ask your blessing upon each one today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, 
Uh, we're going to have to Benji pass out and uh, some things. And Steve, help, help Benji out there. He's right behind you there. And uh, this is a sheet uh, that's going to, uh, I'm going to mention it in the message today. Um, how many of you pray for your grandchildren? Yeah, I thought you did. This is a great uh, resource that I found. <coughs> to uh, help us expand and, and grow on uh, praying for uh, our grandchildren. And uh, so that's uh, what's being handed out there as well. Let's go ahead and put the scripture up on the screen for today. So while that's being passed out, And uh, you get that sheet. This is our scripture for the sermon today. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these truly I tell you or I'm telling you the truth anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it what a week this past week has been we began last Sunday by launching the bold faith initiative And uh, Steve Smith brought a great message over to Hillsdale Church. And uh, Debbie and Tony and team uh, that were over there encouraged the church today. Roy Cole and Roy and Don Cole and their family are over there um, encouraging the church today. So we have a direct connection with what's what's going on in the Hillsdale Church. And then through the Bold Faith Initiative, uh, there are ten churches Uh, in our area uh, that are participating in this. So what that means is hopefully everyone is being encouraged to use this prayer guide so that the body of Christ, widespread, are praying the same things, crying out to the Lord, calling out to the Lord on uh, our own behalf, on behalf of our church, on behalf of all the people in our county, and then, of course, across the nation. So the Bold Faith Initiative... And uh, this past Thursday, um, hopefully, if uh, you prayed for our nation, it was the National Day of Prayer. This is the flyer that we passed out. If you'd like one of these flyers, we can uh, get one of those for you. What, what the flyer has in it is seven different areas, key areas that we pray for in our nation. So I'm sure that each one of you had the opportunity this past week to express your faith in prayer, praying for bold faith. Praying for the influence of evil to decrease in our culture. And then the news exploded this week with the leak at the Supreme Court. Evil and righteousness have been displayed over the airwaves, radio, TV, internet, and every other source of communication. And it was interesting, through our Bold Faith Prayer Guide, We began by exalting the Lord. We've cried out to Him to move His mighty hand in our area and in our nation. And we have asked Him to lead us and to guide us and to become more like Him. We need to become more like Jesus, don't we? We need to become more like Him as we grapple with the issues of the day. We don't need to deal with them like we would deal with them. We need to deal with them as Jesus would deal with them with his character, with his life, with his hope, with his encouragement. You know, some of these issues make us angry. And other issues cause us to just shake our heads in disgust because we never thought we would hear such things happening in our nation in our lifetime. And yet, it is happening. And at the same time, 
We have participated with millions of Christians across our nation on the National Day of Prayer, praying with the hope that a terrible law that has led to the death of millions of babies in the womb will be reversed and handed back to the states as it should have always been. We have prayed for wisdom for our leaders to lead with righteousness because God says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to people, to any people. Specifically, in the last two days, on days in your prayer guide, days six and day seven, we've prayed for Christians to be what, God, what Jesus declared us to be. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And to do that takes what? Bold faith. Because that's what Jesus talked about. You don't want your salt to become tainted. You don't want your light to have a shade put over it. Right? Just yesterday, we uh, meditated on the great teaching of Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 26. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from its roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what, that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Oh, how this word from Jesus is so pertinent to, hear, to us here today at Northview Christian Church. We need to pray believing that God is going to do something wonderful and something great in this place. Jesus said, have faith in God. If you say to this mountain, move, that... And in what mountain is it that you face and that we face? And we say, move, don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will happen. It will be done for you. You know what this takes? Bold faith, right? The prayer points yesterday on Saturday were this. I hope you prayed this. That you prayed for God's mighty hand to move great obstacles in our own lives, in the church, and in our communities. If we don't pray it, is God going to do it? Is his hand going to move? What do you want, church? What do you want from the hand of God? We must pray it. We were to pray that doubt and discouragement and apathy will be removed in hard hearts are you fighting with that? Do you fight with doubt and discouragement and, and apathy? Then ask God, remove it from my heart, Lord. We are to pray that our prayer lives will mature with great faith anticipation. You know what that is? Jesus says, if you believe, believe that it will happen. Anticipate that it will happen. Prayer can accomplish what God can accomplish. Jesus taught it, Jesus modeled it, and now it's up to you and me to receive it, to believe it, and to walk in it. Today is Mother's Day, right? All right, we said Happy Mother's Day, but now this is what I want you to do. Give everyone who is close to you a high five for having a mother, or for being a mother, or just in general, celebrating moms. Give each other a high five there. All right, good job. See, that's how we participate in sermons around here. <laughs> you give a high five. 
I just think it's so appropriate to have Mother's Day today after this week when the evil forces around us have been denigrating motherhood. There's a beautiful passage in Matthew chapter 19, two verses, 13 and 14. The passage we read, we read earlier is from Mark. This one's from Matthew. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he placed his hands on them, he went on from there. This account is in Matthew and it's in Mark and it's in Luke. And it's interesting, each one of them, each one of them have a little bit different emphasis. I'm sure it happened everywhere that Jesus went. If you were a parent and Jesus was in the next town, what would you do given what you know about Jesus? Would, he want, would you want him to bless your child, to touch your child, to, you know, and he knew that he was doing that? Sure. Jesus' point that we've got to get this morning, his point is, I'm telling you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the four people or the four groups of people in this short passage. First of one, it's interesting. In all three accounts, it says people brought little kids to Jesus. And, and Luke says babies. He used the word for babies. Why didn't they say moms and, or dads or whatever? Because I think this is what the deal that people, so moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents, people brought their kids. What were they doing? They were exhibiting their faith by bringing their children to Jesus. Specifically, that he would lay his hands on them and bless them or pray for them because they recognized, they may not have known he was Messiah. Most of them at this point didn't know that, but they recognized the specialness in him. That's what people should, when, they, when people in the world experience Christians, they should experience the specialness of Christ. Unfortunately, what they experience is condemnation. We see that happen over and over and over. Why in the world would the church, individuals in the church, people, you and me, why would we ever expect the world to live like Christians? If one doesn't have the Holy Spirit within them, is it possible? You know the answer. You can't. We can be nice people because we're inherently made in the image of God. Everybody is. We can be nice people. But it's so important for the world to be able to see in us Christ. So the emphasis was on little children. In my mind's eye, I see this. Little children being handed to who? The creator of the universe. Whew. That's a mind blower, isn't it? Or those, those little kids, tykes running around. Uh, parents trying to corral them, running up to Jesus, loving him, hopping into his lap. Just think of this. Jesus is the embodiment of the kingdom of God. He is the king. They're literally wrapped in the arms of Jesus, being enveloped literally by the king of the kingdom of God. So powerful. And this is what Jesus is pointing out. Jesus wants us to trust him. And to be a part of the kingdom with no shame, with complete trust, just like children. And to receive the blessing that comes from him. This is a picture of bold faith. It's childlike. It's fun. It's joyous. It's wonderful. To be in the arms of Jesus is wonderful, and it's not condemning. Mm. Ch 
children have this special capacity. I, I, I suppose it is God-given. But children have a special capacity to trust, to love, to submit, and to surrender without coming up with a hundred different excuses. Adults come up with a hundred different excuses, right? So this is a great faith lesson. Uh, although faith is never even mentioned in the passage, but boy, it just oozes with it. Now I want us to look at Jesus. We've looked at people. We've looked at little children. What about Jesus? Jesus had earned the trust of the people, right? He was a stranger to most of them. They, they didn't know each other personally, but they knew his character. And Jesus didn't point to the faith of the people. He pointed to the faith of the children. Although, we can see, if we look at the passage, we can see the faith of the people there, trusting Jesus. So now enter the disciples. What did they do? They rebuked the people. They rebuked them. Don't bother the master. Don't bother the rabbi. He doesn't have enough time for you. Your kids aren't important, important enough for Jesus' attention. <laughs> They really missed the point of Jesus' ministry. And Jesus was upset about that. Remember the Mark passage? He was what? Indignant. He was indignant. There's such powerful lessons in looking at the disciples and in looking at the church. Because we know that our job is to exude Christ's love, Christ's mercy and grace, Christ's likeness. That's who we are. So we've got to get ourselves out of the way in our judgments, in our criticisms, in our condemnations, so that they can come to the one who will release them from what they already know about themselves. I am a sinner. But I sure would love to experience the love of God. I really, really would. So here's a couple of great lessons for church ministry and for family ministry from this passage. I'm going to call them bold faith lessons today. Got two of them, two big ones. The first one is the most obvious, and that's this. People need to bring their children to Jesus, right? Right? Have you noticed, as I have through the years, uh, 40-some years of ministry, that kids, as they're growing up, uh, have an openness to Jesus, up, up to about 10, 11, sometimes 12 years old. That's when they're the most receptive, before they start losing interest. I don't know, maybe puberty has something to do with it. The hormones of the flesh start interfering with the faith of the spirit. Uh, it's a struggle all of us adults know all too well. Romans chapter 7, right? Let me ask a question. How many of you here today made a commitment to follow Christ when you were a child? Look around the room. Hold it up high. Look. Okay. This is what we know. I don't care what church you go into. The majority of the people that are in church made a life commitment to Jesus when they were a child. Did you know that? Go to any church. And it's going to be the ones who have been raised in the faith that are going to be in the majority. Interesting. That's why children's ministries are so vitally important. It's not the fun and games, although that's part of childhood, right? Right? It's that we use fun and games to, they're childlike. But here's, here's the thing. God has put within little humans the capacity to operate at deep faith levels. Do we get that? When it comes to faith, they actually can be more mature than adults are. Is that not what Jesus was saying? Because of their, and you just point, we can point to ourselves based on the commitments we made to the Lord. 
when we had very little understanding, but we know Jesus loved us and we love Jesus. And that is a deep faith commitment. That fleshes out over time. This is one of the great challenges of our day, folks. Pre-COVID, so pre-2020, we did see that parents of children were drifting away from the church. At Northview, yes, but in many, many, many churches. Post-COVID, we see a great chasm of emptiness in thousands upon thousands of children's classrooms that used to bustle with energy and laughter and love and the teaching, Jesus loves me, this I know, to finish it, for the Bible tells me so. The alarms ought to be ringing very loudly for the church. But it's, it, it's not, it's, it's not a, a lack of interest or a lack of effort, but we need to understand something here. Get a hold of this. Satan and the principalities and the powers hate children. And we've seen it through the years. They hate children. And now, things have happened in our world by which, at least in the corporate event, we are seeing far, far, far less children. So, we don't throw up our hands. We go to the Lord and say, Lord, what do we do about this? This is a mountain that needs to move. I want to tell you this. The first place of training children belongs in the homes, not in the church. It begins with parents and grandparents, all right? So that's, that's where the handout comes in. You got your handout? It says grands on there, okay? Some great suggestions there. I'm praying for your grandchildren. We must pray for a deep conviction in our own hearts toward our children for Jesus. The last book in the Old Testament, Malachi, talks about how the ministry of John the Baptist would turn the hearts of their parents, turn the hearts of the parents to their children, and the children's hearts to their parents. That promise was repeated by the angel to Zechariah when he uh, showed up to tell him he was going to have a child, and he was going to name that child John. I believe that we are in a very similar state in our world in which The parents' hearts need to be turned to the Lord for their children and the children for the parents and for the Lord. Ezekiel said it a little bit different way. Ezekiel said that that God one day will give people a new heart and a new spirit and that he will remove the heart of stone and will give us a heart of flesh. People, we need to be praying this, that God will give, will renew, renew a sense in our nation and in our county and in our homes that, that, that this hardness of heart towards the Lord and the ways of the Lord and the will of the Lord will be removed. That's the heart of stone, that it will be removed and that a new heart of flesh of the Spirit of God will just flood across our homes and this county and our nation. In our culture, there is a hardness of heart that has developed. And we need a shaking. We need a breaking for this to happen. I'm telling you, folks, a time is coming soon when people are going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And the church needs to be ready with hope. The church needs to be ready with, there's an answer. His name is Jesus. There's a time coming when people's hearts will be revived and we must be ready to go if we're not already. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number, the big bold faith lesson is we need to bring our children to Jesus, being as creative as we can. And even the church might have to totally change how it approached children's ministry in the past uh, and, and thinking about what are new ways to reach this generation 
for Jesus. There's a lot of thinking and praying and, and creativity to go along with that. Second lesson, we need to be like Jesus. So what, in, this, in these two verses, what was Jesus like? He blessed the children in his realm of influence, right? The children were brought to him, he blessed them. How many of you knew Gerald Arnold here? Gerald, Gerald Arnold. Okay, what was he called? That's right. The candy man or the Tootsie Roll man. He blessed the children. He didn't teach a class, all right? But every Sunday, you could have gotten a Tootsie Roll from him. Kids loved him. He loved them. And those kids have grown up now. And you know who they remember? The candy man, all right? Right over there. There you go. Yeah, see? He was a quiet man. Uh, he he uh, owned Arnold's Auto Parts, right? Had a popcorn machine in the business there. Why? Because there were kids that didn't get breakfast. And they knew, the word got around, they could come up to the auto parts store and get a bag of popcorn so they could have something in their stomach for the day. He ministered to children. He has a legacy of faith that people remember, but it's not only the kids. No, 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 no. See, I, I hear it. I, I hear it. I hear it from you today. Uh, the adults were watching and were inspired by this quiet man of faith. It was quiet, but it was bold. That's something we need to understand about bold faith. It's not necessarily dominant. It's not necessarily out there front. You can be very quiet and still be very bold. You know, don't, don't get those two things mixed up. All right. So what question to ask yourself, what can you do to engender goodwill in the lives of children? Your own children, your own grandchildren, of course, but beyond that, our neighborhood children here in Coldwater as a church. What should we do this summer? We've we got to do something this summer. You know, maybe not a week-long VBS. Where our resources are maybe not there. But there's something we could do. You know, maybe we could do a day something or... But something that we would all get behind and not just expect it to happen because, you know what? If we just expect things to happen because we hang a flyer on a window, it's not going to happen. It's going to take the work of the church like it used to and says, we're going to work this plan, and with God's help, this mountain's going to move. We've got to work it. So let's pray about that. What can we do? Even just one thing this summer. One last point. John 4, 13. Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. And this is what he says to her. Everyone drinks this water from Jacob's well. They will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now, Jesus said this to a stranger, right? He had never met her before. A Samaritan woman. What was her frame of mind? Disheartened. Rejected. What's Jesus doing? He is grooming her to be the initial evangelist to her people. He's taking the, what in their culture was, was thought to be the bottom of the cultural ladder. And that's who Jesus wanted to use to get people to come to him. It really is an epic story of the ages. And the truth that Jesus tells her is the same truth that we have for people today. Jesus engenders in her a bold faith that she cannot keep to herself. He, promised her, he promises her water that will truly satisfy. Meaning, she can have a relationship with God that is full of worship. And it doesn't have to happen at a certain time or a certain place or, or even a certain liturgy. No. It's a worship that she can have in spirit and in truth. And our message is the same to people today. 
It's inspired by forgiveness, no matter who you are or what you've done. It's inspired by acceptance, no matter who you are or what you have done. There is a tremendous grace in the ministry of Jesus that we, the church, are to emulate. We are to copy the ministry of Jesus because it is his ministry through us, right? It's his ministry through us. And in John chapter 7, Jesus points out to rivers of living water as being the presence of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. And we know in Romans chapter 8 that the Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory, as Paul said in Colossians 1. So when we walk in the Spirit, when we're filled with the Spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> We are the ministry of Jesus to a broken world, just like Jesus ministered to the broken woman of Sychar who came out to get water in the middle of the day because of the shame that was in her life. And when she left that well, she went and she told her neighbors about the Messiah who had come. He told me everything I ever did. And they came out too to hear Jesus and to listen to him. And they said, we no longer believe be just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man truly is the Savior of the world. Oh, that's my prayer for the church today here at Northview, here across churches in our community and across our land, that when people experience the church, they will experience Christ in us, the hope, the forgiveness. So this week, my friends, fellow workers in Christ, live with Christ on the forefront of your mind and your heart. How do we do that? You know, we start our day by, by saying, Lord, I'm yours today, and I'm praying for these things. <clears throat> Paul says, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. He emptied himself. He died for us. God exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. And as we walk this week in bold faith, Keep your eyes on Jesus, not on the storm, not on the people who don't measure up, Jesus. Amen. The worship team would come up. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for the hope that you give us. Thank you for the acceptance that you have for us. You did not come to judge us, but you came to deliver us from the judgment. We're so thankful for that. And help us, Lord, as a, as a congregation and as a church, help us, Lord, to reflect your ministry to people like the woman at the well, like the woman caught in adultery. Lord, the mercy and the compassion and the grace. You dealt with the sin. Go and sin no more. So a perfect balance of that which is true and right and good and of grace and mercy because we need your compassion, Lord, for one another and for the world. And at the same time, being as wise as serpent and as innocent as doves, as we walk through this week, we need your help, Lord. We need your help. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing this song. It's a prayer song. It's not just a song that we sing to one another, but we dedicate ourselves and our lives to the Lord in walking with Him this week. So let's, let's sing this song. Let's pray this song. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you.
and I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and step by step you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, and I will see. Jesus this week? Amen. We do. We do. I hope you do. So let me bless you. May the Lord bless you. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, and he will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. And he increases power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, he will renew their strength, and we will soar on wings like eagles. And we will run and not grow weary, and we will walk and not be faint. Church, let's walk with the Lord this week. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me a great salvation so rich. Bless you all. Have a good week.